Black Forest Labs is just going on an absolute streak of model releases lately, but the most recent one being the Flux Crea Dev model. This is a new open source model from Black Forest Labs under the non-commercial license, meaning it cannot be used to make money, but it's still definitely cool to see the direction that we're going in with these open source models and how they compare to the closed source models. So Flux Crea Dev is a partnership between Black Forest Labs and Crea AI, who also has some pretty phenomenal nominal AI models on their end, so kind of smashing the best of both worlds together to create this really awesome new model. With this model, they're focusing on cutting edge output quality with a focus on aesthetic photography. And based on what I've seen around for a lot of people, this kind of seems like it's targeting the AI skin problem. And honestly, I had to do some testing for myself and I can't say I necessarily agree with that. So the full model is pretty large. It's about 23.8 gigs, so definitely meant for those, you know, higher level level VRAM computers. If you've got around 24 gigs, you should be able to run this, but there are also quantized versions already available. As those of you know who have been around the channel for a little bit now, I am running on 8 gigabytes of VRAM and I had no problem running the FP8 scaled model, which is pretty close. So even if you're not running the full model, you can definitely go FP8, Q8, Q7 and still get some really, really phenomenal results. And the best part about this is that the workflow is unbelievably simple. It's just your typical flux workflow, meaning that you don't need to download any new clips, any new VAEs. It'll work with the existing flux VAEs and clips, which is really awesome. But yeah, this is the whole workflow. As far as I can tell right now, this is only text to image. I have not seen image to image, but I'm sure that people can figure it out. You guys will be able to find the link to the full model as well as the quantized models in the description below and also on our patreon guide where we kind of show all of the examples we're going to go over right now and you can also find this simple workflow at the bottom of our patreon post as well but you don't even necessarily need to go there to get this you can honestly just go up to your workflows browse templates flux and then just pick flux dev and it's essentially the same thing so you don't necessarily need to grab it from the patreon but if you just want something really quick and you're there anyways it's there for you but i wanted to take some time now to actually go over these results so this is what i was able to get using the fp8 scaled model just a simple prompt we're at 768 by 1344 so definitely a pretty high res output for sure i'm sure we could go higher than this but just for the sake of generation time i decided to keep it somewhat small but you can go higher than this and maybe we would see even better results. And this is good, right? I mean, it's definitely a solid output. Don't get me wrong. I think this the skin definitely is better. Um, it's not as plasticky. We do have kind of some additional wrinkles, pores, little imperfections, but it's too perfectly imperfect. And what I mean by that is that while we have noise in the skin, for example, it's pretty flat. It's almost like somebody took a noise pattern and projected it onto the skin. And again, while this does look good, it is passable depending on what you're doing. If we're going for production grade, advertisement ready assets, this is not going to cut it. People will be able to realize that this is AI. Maybe not for the first couple weeks while this is out, but the human eye, especially those who are actively on social media, is becoming more and more trained to identify these AI generated outputs. So unfortunately, this just will not cut the bill. And we've talked about skin refinement a lot on this page. We've got about three or four open workflows that are available on our Patreon. We also have some paid workflows that are also available, all of them aimed to solve this problem and provide more inconsistency and more logical skin refinement. And with that in mind, I don't think that there's a better opportunity out there for me to show off our new platform than with the Flux Crea dev model. So this is our new platform that we're working on. We kind of teased it a little bit last video, but today we'll really kind of dive into it and, and show a little bit more of what it can do, especially on the skin refinement side. So we've got our loaded image here, the same one that we looked at, and then we've got three different outputs from our skin refiner workflow. We'll take a look at the first one. And as we come across, take careful look at the forehead specifically, we can see that the skin becomes more imperfect. The lighting becomes more diffused across the face. We can see that some of these wrinkles, for example, if you look kind of right under the eye here, see this kind of flat, 
perfect noise as we go across it it kind of separates it out makes it a little bit more distinct across the entire face same if we look down here like just over the shoulder we can see some kind of veins popping out too some stretch marks so these are the things that i think really take skin to the next level because skin is also one of those really unique features that can define your character and again as i mentioned we have a few different outputs here that you can pick from obviously you can go a little bit heavier too to really see the change and the difference and this might be a little too far honestly right this is probably too far off the spectrum maybe it's a little bit too detailed but again you can tune this to really break up those details and and make it better and then when we run it through an upscaler i mean this is you can't deny the quality of this you just can't you can see individual hairs wrinkles little stubbles here again another skin blemish little imperfection so overall i mostly just wanted to put this out there to show that there's definitely going to be room for improvement and that while the flux korea dev model is getting closer it still doesn't entirely provide the control that we need and here's another great example of kind of what I mean. This is the staple image for Flux Korea Dev on the official Comfy UI blog page. The whole point of adding this image to show, look at all the new skin details that we can add. And yeah, it's better than what we would have gotten before, but you can't convince me that this is realistic. If we're talking about convincing real skin images of people again i just i just don't think that this would ever be used in a production setting especially after you look at it through a refiner i mean even this probably i i don't think i've seen before but even then this is more realistic than what we're seeing here right like these blemishes are way way too strong versus here we have a much softer look a much more ingrained look as if it's actually part of the skin and not just like printed or painted on top which i think is kind of what we tend to see with this model and again when you run it through an upscaler you have some pretty insane detail coherence like you can see dry skin patching up right you can see the wrinkles under the eye you can see individual parts of the pupil little hairs on the chin right and then i have one more example for you guys and again this like it's passable don't get me wrong that these images are good right out of the gate but i'm specifically focusing on the ai production ready side of things so we'll take this image load it up into our workflow set all our parameters we want to make sure we're keeping the mouth lips eyes and clothing the same and after a few seconds we'll get our generation back and again we can see the change it's just night and day like this shiny spot on the nose take a look at that as it kind of gets more diluted same with the chin we have some softness here but as we fix the image we can see it kind of gets fixed same with the hairline here so overall it's good the flux korea dev model is good especially at those more more landscape aesthetic stylistic photographs but when we're talking specifically about people i do think that there's an extra step there that we can take to really bring the best out of these images and don't forget that these were generated using the kind of base settings within our platform but there's a lot more fine tuning that you can get in order to really have control over your skin which is why we're providing you three different images back so overall i just wanted to take a few minutes and really talk about this because obviously as a channel that's really focusing on AI skin, it's pretty important to us. And our platform is not live yet. We're still kind of working out some kinks, but if you are interested, if you think that you could definitely benefit from this tool, feel free to subscribe, but then also I would recommend becoming a free member on our Patreon as we'll make an introductory post to the platform on there when it goes live. That's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new and we'll talk to you guys later.